Well, good morning there, good buddy. What's happening? How you doing? Very good. Very good, actually. Hey, right. you know, well, just you and me. Uh, that ad is something I'm working on. Uh, I'm using to advertise on all the marketplaces like Portland and Seattle and California. And that's just a test ad. The other ad for the team is going to be used locally. However, everything, if you look at the landing page, you'll see it talks about real estate, uh, home finance, and also uh, uh, insurance. So, uh, hey, yeah, well, you know, again, the version you sent was, was like, you know, that was your own promotion. That wasn't a, doesn't, wasn't a team looking like Well, that. it's kind of hard to to put the whole team and try to sell it in less than, I've got, I only got less than a minute to put a video together and to sell as a team to bring entice people. So in the sense that anyone who calls up regarding real estate, you know, we all get, we all get the, uh, the information, but on the real estate end of it, you and I have our arrangement. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm not trying to pull a fast one. Although at my age, anything fast is kind of out of my out of my uh, out of my league. Yeah, but I, I I guess I was confused because the um, the last interaction as a group that we had, you know, uh, uh, Aaron had put you know his input in about a couple of words and the sent the way things were written yeah. and stuff like that. So I thought that's what was going to be going out to all these markets. That was going to go out and it will go out very shortly, but. Uh, the hit what's happening right now in real real time. Mm -hmm. Get the business from places all across the country. Uh, I only spent, I think, a three day. It's a three day trial at twenty dollars. Okay. Yeah. You know, let's again. Let's uh, track the results then. Yeah. Well, that's that's we do. <laughs> Very cool. Oh my God! Look at Dan. Dan Caldwell is on the pro. I am I am out in the world spreading love, joy, and awesomeness. Well, something like that. Anyway, we got <laughs> Baker and Becky's on here, and and Mara's on here. Oh my God, it's just sort of like lighting up. Like <laughs> the morning has become us. Happy September 11th. I guess that's something you can say. Happy We're Alive Day, the day we never forget the day that polarized the nation and brought us back together. However, I think it's still a beautiful day to be an agent in Keller Williams, Southern Arizona and across the nation. Although it is nice overcast and 69 degrees outside because I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Heather does not. She hates it. She's cold. She's shivering and she's whining about it. It's okay. I still love her. <laughs> well, she only had she's someone, not built. She only had someone who could keep her warm. It would be a different story. Uh, shame that she doesn't. It's a shame that she doesn't. How is everyone this beautiful Friday morning? I am definitely running late to the office. I made the cute business decision to stop and get somebody breakfast. And that uh, turned into a 20 minute ordeal in a drive line of a bagel shop. So I am on the road. I am being safe. I'm not looking at my phone, but I am driving. So You, you know, I'm looking at the gallery view of everybody here. And I'm thinking a great, a great name for this group would be the Keller Williams Squares, almost like the Hollywood Squares. Because they're all in our little boxes and stuff like that. That's kind of nice. But Dick, the problem is not a single one of us are square. <laughs> I'm right. all around. I, I am a square shooter, buddy. And everybody knows that because hey. I get it done for everybody. Yes, yeah, sir. What, what kind of things do you, you want to work on today? We've got one last day of scripts and role play and practice and shenanigans and all kinds of stuff today. We can ask questions. We can answer them. We can help each other out. Where can we help you the best? Morning, Miss Mara. You're awfully quiet. Hi. I do have something to share real quick. I thought it might help others. Um, so I had a guy who reached out on a sign call. He's in Green Valley. He wanted to move up here. I think I told you guys that, you know, he was looking for a certain whatever area. So he said last week in an email or a couple days ago, let's put 
the home search on hold for now. I will contact you when we make a firm housing decision. So this is just one of those people who doesn't have to move right now, right? They just want to. So I had attended um, a little webinar last week from a lender who was talking about the interest rates. I just thought this would help. So I wrote him, I appreciate you letting me know that you want to reconsider your move. And I've changed that wording to make it more diplomatic. <laughs> I've turned off your report for now. Uh, I just wanted to share something the lender mentioned last week, a year and a half ago. The normal interest rate was 4.4%. And the payment on a $250,000 house without taxes and insurance, because that's how he stated it, was twelve fifty two. dollars Today, we have rates at 2.875. And that same house can be had for a monthly payment of ten thirty seven. dollars Today, you can get a $300,000 house. <laughs> what do you see on there? Had for a $250,000 house. I said, I just wanted to share that buyers are getting more for their money right now, so it's still a good time to buy. No one has a crystal ball, but we know what the market is right now, and I just want my buyers to be well informed to make the best decision. Good I look job. forward to hearing you folks when you're ready to start looking good again. Job. I realize there's super low inventory, but we need to just find one good one. I hope you have a great fall. So it felt like fall this morning. Please let me know if I can be of service. So he wrote right back and said, wow, you make a good, <laughs> he said, well, I, that was very informative. Thank you for sharing. You make a good case for buying soon. We just want more than a nice home. We want a nice neighborhood. Don't know Tucson. That's a big concern. Okay. Put us back on the home search. So with that little email, awesome. he did, uh, you know, complete 180, I guess it is. And uh, so we're back looking. So I just thought I could help others because Sounded like some scripting from Dan there, plus this little, you know, we always say interest rates are low, but I really liked how the lender put it in real turn, you know, hey, you can literally afford 50000 more in a home right now than you could a year and a half ago. We don't know where right. we're going, that's... but they're most likely not going further down. <laughs> and so. No, and what you want to look at is how can you, how can you break the information down to a consumable morsel? Because we understand the, the leverage that happens with a reduction in rate. Some buyers don't, and being being that you put it in a math sense like that, where it was a tangible number, you can clearly see, yes, it's you know, so much value more. This, that just made it real, and then you uncovered the objection. What's his objection now? He doesn't know Tucson. He doesn't know Tucson all that well, so he wanted to do his research and find Tucson, and he didn't feel that he was he was prepared enough yet to make that decision. So, I think that's going to be where you can start honing in the different parts of Tucson and maybe do, you know, parts of Tucson you may love and what's important about them. And bam, you got yourself a $300,000 buyer. If not, maybe more, you might push himself to a higher limit. That was my next thought was to say, hey, how about we check out 325? <laughs> <laughs> you can afford 300, but now you can afford 325. No, you just automatically do that in the search. You just bump the number up to 325, so it's included, and, you're, and he'll go, well, we said 300. Well, sometimes the things that are listed for a bit more can be bargained down, so we ought to look at that in case you think of that. But, Mara, the one thing that I think uh, you should reiterate for is that one line that was in there. We don't have a crystal ball, but, and or what, the but shouldn't be there. But yeah. What was that? Can you read that line again? Yeah. No one has a crystal ball, but we know what the market is right now. And I just want my buyers to That's it. make the best decision. So. That's the statement. We know what the market is right now. That's probably the standout piece in that whole email. The market at the moment. Yeah. So. Market at the moment. We don't have a crystal ball, but we know the market at the moment. That is a terrific line. So. I'm going to use that. Uh-oh, he lost Dan. He lost yeah, him. he's gone, obviously, from the car to the building, so he'll probably pop, pop back in here shortly. But, um, yeah, and, and again, you did I, I kind of missed because there was some noise going on. Did you, did the, you actually have in the email there that there, the, he was able to buy $50,000 more worth of house? That's what the math worked out to in that payment? Yep. That's awesome. So that's that. That's the number Dan was saying. Put it in. Put it. Break it down into numbers that that the consumer can understand. Um, that's the same way that we 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 do the math and say, you know, the um, the the difference the difference of five thousand dollars in this contract offer is twenty dollars a month in your payment. So that you know that we've used, but that's a neat reverse taking that to how much more house you can buy if you look at if you qualify for X amount of dollars more and things like that. So another good tip. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. I wanted to find an easy way to also tell people who have a lot of equity in their home because people right now are worried about, okay, if I sell my home, 
I'm going to be paying more, even if I'm going to downsize. And we need to try to be able to say, well, you've got all this equity, plus with this really low interest rate, you're not going to, you know, be paying more. And I, I need a more skillful way to say that. Well, the, uh, another piece I would use there is because of the equity in your house, you're going to be able to go into a new mortgage with, with at least 20% down and buy your way out of a mortgage insurance payment. So with that, there's automatically some savings. And secondly, taking advantage of this interest rate, you're going to pay less interest over time than the loan you're currently in. Yeah, you're going to have, you know, the payment may go up, but again, you're buying yourself, you know, more, or maybe they can go into a 15 year loan instead of a 30 so that they have that kind of savings. Um, I remember working out when I was doing mortgages, I remember working out a deal where, um, I looked back in the, back in 2005, we had the whole page that was the truth and lending page. And at the very top, it said, here's what you're borrowing. Here's what you're going to pay in interest, so on and so forth. And the, the amount of interest was significantly more than the actual price of the home. Right. And so by flipping to a 15 on that truth and lending and putting them side by side, you know, it was almost $100,000 in savings on a $250,000 home. So the, you know, stating a case for uh, considering a 15 year if they can afford it, but how much faster it pays off and how much less you pay over in interest over time is another angle in that situation. You know, also, anybody here ever buy a buy a car recently? Yeah. And you you upgraded from a a, a Chevette to a. Uh, Mercedes or whatever, but you, you had an old car that's 10 years old and you got a car that now maybe is a year old or brand yeah, new. I can't agree much of it, Dick. Quit trying it. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if you want to, want to improve your position in life, it may cost you a few dollars more, but in the long run, it's going to be worth it because your investment, your house is a running long investment financial investment in your life. So look at it that way. Silence. I can't believe it. I'm sorry to mute Jason real quick. So there you go. Here, you're in that wording real quick in chat if anybody wants to steal that wording. It's Sure. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, Dan, I was, while you were absent for that moment, I was hitting on that line that she had in her email. Um, we don't have a crystal ball, but we know where the market is today. That, I think that's a really, really good statement. Mm -hmm. That's a bold thing right there. Good job, Mara. She's always bringing out the pearls, and I love it. And she's wearing a red shirt today. Thank you, Mara. You're welcome. Red shirt. I think today was like the most important red shirt day for me, because it's a September 11th fell on a Friday, so morning to us. Morning, guys. So I love the I love the concept of talking about the rates and how it affects you and stuff like that. Every anything you can do to not rationalize, but make it real for somebody, it changes their perception of it because you you can get a lot of indecision out of fear. And the fear is the fear of the unknown. I don't know the market. I don't know what my payment's going to be. I don't know if I can qualify. I don't know the area. I don't know if I'm making the right decision. And sometimes you can collapse all that fear down with the simple term. And that's giving them the permission to do it. And that's why, don't worry, now is the time. Don't worry, this rate is going to be great. Don't worry, I've talked to your lender, you can afford it. We just need to peel back those layers and find the, the underlying objection because they can say, you know what, we're, we're going to put our household on search for a while. And I love Mara's example because it, it, it showcased exactly this, this point. You know what, we're going to put our home search on, you know, hold for a while. And then she's like, great. Well, I, this is some information that I thought might be relevant to you. So come from contribution. I, I appreciate you want to put your home search on hold. That's a great idea. You know, make sure you get more information to make a well-informed decision. Here's something I heard the other day that might interest you. Bam. Service of the information. She took some information that we got from a lender, downloaded it through her, her awesome brain, and spit it out in a consumable form that made sense to just about anybody. And then he's all, you're right. I should buy now. I just don't know the area. Now we have uncovered the true objection. It's the fear of buying a house in the wrong area. 
Now we just need to find out what's important to them about that, right? It all anchors back to that question, that magical question. What's important about that? You know, what's important about your neighborhood? A real good question to ask. What's a real good question to ask somebody so you can get some information about their neighbor, like their desired neighborhood? Tell me more about that. <laughs> You're on fire today. Do you have the open book? Are you are you reading from the notes? No, but I write everything down. That's why it kind of helps stick. Yeah. You have a, do you have a teleprompter with the answers to the questions? It's the magical red shirt. It is. It's it's the, the comprehensive red shirt. But that's the thing is, tell me more about that. You know, I'm, you know, I I don't know much about Tucson. Tell me more about that. Right. Well, I just want to make sure I buy in a right a good area. Okay. Tell me more about that. Or you can name it. What what can you say in that case, Larry? Well, I want to I want to buy a home in a nice area or a safe area. And that's, you know, look at you know, this, go ahead and dig up some uh, crime statistics for various neighborhoods around town. Okay. Do you have a zip code in mind? Zip code in mind? Okay, we can narrow it down. How about, who's got another question you can answer to that? I just want to be in a safe neighborhood. I was going to ask, well, what do you consider a nice neighborhood? Ding, ding, ding. Tess, high five. Nailed it. What do you consider a safe neighborhood? We don't define this. this is our problem as agents, and, and this is this is global, myself included. We try to project our own definitions on things. Is 29th in, in Alvern on a safe neighborhood? Uh, no. 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 Why are there so many people that live at 29th in Alvern on? Low cost. Well, they don't. It's not a conservative oh, well. Like that. Is 29th and Alvernon considered an, a safe neighborhood compared to South Compton? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, we project our own definition on things and we want to have those conversations. And it's, it's simple, you know, tell me more about that. Well, I want to make sure I buy in a safe neighborhood. Okay, like Tess says, what do you define as a safe and good neighborhood? And, well, you know, that, that's one of the reasons to, to sit down with your clients and do a checklist of what are things that are important to them. Because believe it or not, I used to think I knew everything and that I knew what was good, what was bad. I discovered my clients didn't feel the same way. So forget what I think, it's what they think. And if you can get as much, uh, uh, as much intelligence as what they want, then you can help them. <laughs> And occasionally you might get the, the client that, you know, isn't really, they, they want a safe neighborhood, but they haven't really thought that through. So, you know, question one is, well, um, are you, are you, do you vision yourself in some, in a community that's a gated community? That, that would, that would be a way to open that door. Yeah, that stay, stay, away, stay away from those kind of closed ended things. Do you sit, leave, live in a gated community? Yes. Okay. Ends the conversation. Go into this, how about this, Larry? Larry, I, I completely understand you're looking for a safe and, and good neighborhood. What does that look like? Yeah. That's the other question I was almost going to say. I, I saw it. It was leaking out. It was. And then your yeah, the sign was up. Hey, hey. <laughs> so what does that look like? It's, it's a simple question, right? But is it not powerful? Yeah. That makes them think. It makes them think it through. You want, you want to take that, what does it look like, more powerful, and ask this question. Who's your neighbor? Mr. Mr. I can't think this early in the morning. Me either, Tess. That's why I do scripting because I don't have Dad, to. It just comes out. <laughs> you guys know who I'm thinking of. Mr. Rogers. Yes, thank you. I thought I was. I thought I was going to say you were saying Mr. Ed. No. Also a safe neighbor. <laughs> Mr. Ed, I yes. love him. I, we know. I'm just going to. talking horse. Right. Uh, I, I lived next to Mr. Ed for a while. It was a pain in the ass. Too much noise. Always horsing around. Didn't like it. Uh, uh, boom, boom. Too much horse shit. Too much. <laughs> Although this morning, I will leave this out there that I, I was recapping something and I told Heather, I, was, I had a dream last night that I got shot. She's like, what'd you do? What'd you say? <laughs> Although I don't remember. She's like, did you say the wrong dad joke? And I was like, hold on right there. There is no such thing as a wrong dad joke. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're welcome for that, guys. So, but no, that's the thing is we're having these conversations, like Dick said, it's important to sit them down and go over what they're looking for. What is that also called? Gathering information. Gathering consultation. Help. All right, Tess, again, two for two, killing it. You get one more right, Tess, and I'm going to give you this gift card right here. Okay. It's coffee. I need it. Oh, <laughs> oh give it to her. Darn it. <laughs> she deserves it. So, fire consultation. Go deep on the questions. That's important. Sit them down. Become the professional. Don't just be a, what do they call it? A, a pop-up agent or a pop-tart agent. Uh, whatever they call it, where they just pop up. Oh, you want to go look at this house? Okay, let's go. And then you're showing 15, 20 houses and they're getting like, oh, I love all these houses. And you're like, well, they, they're all different. How can you make a decision if they're all different? It's because you haven't taken the time to sit and discuss what's important to them and why that's important. Know your audience. And how do you know your audience, Dick? You have to find out what they want, where they want, and why they want. Exactly. It's all about them. So I challenge you all as agents to remember that it's not the same as our definitions are different than theirs. We are the experts in the field. We're the professionals. We're the ones that go out there day in and day out and see it all. We get jaded to the fact of certain neighborhoods or we get it. We, we lose excitement about certain things. I want you to handle every client like they're brand new, like you're brand new, they're brand new. It's all exciting. Create that, that they call it ether. Create the ether, that excitement, that interchange that you have. It's, you know, extremely positive and, and all about them. Cause I, I read a great book and I've talked about this book a couple of times. It's the, uh, you know, how to make friends and influence people. I don't, have, have, we, have we mentioned it before? A few times, right? Has anyone of you read it? Probably before you were born. It was, it was definitely written before you were born, which was good. So, I mean, the book has some merit. But I want to I point out there, they talk in the book, they say, what's the most important subject to any person? Themselves. Themselves. Thank you, Tess. There you go. Cards coming your way. Just like that. And great job, Tess. Great we're job, with Tess. You. And I haven't even had my coffee yet. It's because right here. <laughs> Burk up, it's on its way. Yeah, that would that's gonna help, you know. If, the more we talk about them, the more we get them to shine on to what they want. We get the truth behind it. Too many times agents we talk about what we want. I want to sell you a house, I want to sell your house, I want to help you find a house. There and you go. Do they still have access to Michael Lewis marketing suite, new agents? Um they should. Because all these questions came out of there and it's a great getting them to really drill down on the type of house they want so you don't I don't think we do. Yeah, I, I know they were talking I about like it being set down. But... Location and all you have to do is change your info on it or if you're doing it over the phone then I mean there's stuff in that ignite stuff though that we had. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you get one and put it together and always use it. Just make yourself always use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Questions. So if you don't I think I've downloaded them before and I have the old so they're super helpful just to Michael keep Lewis marketing forever. logging in I don't know if it's going to log in it's just still thinking oh it says it's there so I can download the blanks for you and send them so Michael Lewis marketing go to free stuff it's in the buyer consultation English and Spanish which is great for those bilingual agents if you are having a conversation with a Hispan speaker a Spanish speaker my brain just clicked Spanish speaker, then you can have a conversation with words, documents in their native tongue, and it keep, keeps you so much more legally compliant. Just saying. Por qué? Está bien. Está bien. Está bien. Sí. Sí. I said that to Tess yesterday. Sí. All right. Well, that was a great tangent. I loved it. We, we talked about some things, and it went back to more powerful questions. I just want you guys to think about every day, what questions are you asking that are motivating an exciting response, not just, do you want a purple house? No. Do you want a big house? No. I want you to be able to paint the picture with them. Robin, tell me about your front yard. 
It has nice landscaping. I love plants. Okay. What, what do you consider nice landscaping? Hmm. It has to have a tree or two, um, <laughs> some flowering shrubs. Okay. How big is it? Um, it's not too big because I want to be able to take care of it. I'd rather have a large backyard than front yard. Okay. All right. What does your backyard look like? It has a pool. Okay. It has some turf for the dog. It has some fruit trees. Okay. Awesome. What's your favorite fruit? Lime. Limes? Okay. Limes grow here in Tucson. Yes. What, what kind of dog? Oh, well, we, I have my dad's little white Westy Terrier. Okay, so probably going to need a fence, right? Yes, we need a fence. All right, great. You know, tell me about the pool. Ah, well, we like to swim laps every day. Okay. So, and a hot tub for the winter because... <laughs> Now, now, if, does it, if it does it have a built-in hot tub or is it just one that's off to the side? Mm, built-in is preferred. Okay. You see what we're doing? We can literally paint the entire picture. And then the more we asked, you see how she leaned forward in her chair? She pepped up, she smiled more. She was painting the picture. When you do that to your clients, you're going to create so much more engagement. You're going to create so much more energy that it allows them to get into the ether. What you're doing is you're creating a storybook. We've said this before that facts tell, stories sell. Let the stories, you know, do the work. But when we can find the right facts to express and we can find the right things to put into a, a, a mental visual representation, we can walk down that path of home ownership and know exactly what that house looks like. So that when you're previewing homes and, and things hit the market, you can call them up. Hey, Miss Robin, I found your home. And she's all, oh, you did? You found my home? So go ahead, Dick, you had something? Yeah, Dan, you're, you're absolutely right because what you are really doing is asking the client to share with them their dream to paint a picture of what they dream they want. And, you know, even in the preamble of the Constitution of the United States, we talk about the fact that you have the right to dream. And yeah. people believe that very strongly, especially when they're going to spend a lot of money in a house. So please share with me what your dream house is. Because if I'm going to do my job, I got to know what you really want and are looking for it. And I'll do the best I can to find it. That's very, and, and you actually, you form a compact, a covenant with your client at that point because you care. And if you don't, if your client doesn't think you care, they're gonna, not gonna be very happy with you. One of the last questions in this list was, you know, if you could make one last thing to make this your dream home, what would it be? So I did ask a new client that yesterday and he said a basement. <laughs> I was like, we don't have very many of those in Tucson. Maybe we can just look for an extra room to make a man cave. But that was important, right? That he, he did. He combined yeah. that. And that yeah. means I can help them look for an extra room for him to have his space. Um, oh my the, God, move to Detroit. The other script that they used to teach us a lot was, um, I don't know if you've said this, Dan, um, the, it's, you're never going to find a hundred percent house, but we say, if you can find your five top five things, we consider that a 95% house. And most people kind of chuckle when you say that. And then you try to drill down and say, okay, out of everything we've said, can you help me uh, narrow this to what, what were your top five here? You know, cause they will have given us a lot of details. You know, was that garage super important? Like he, sound like he said a pool was really important and then she got on and said no we don't need that and so um anyway asking those questions obviously just super you know mar you're right because prioritize you know what are your priorities is it the pool is it the size of the house is it the size of the lot is it the fact that you are have a mountain view yep. 
and they're going to tell you the very first priority they have is they're really their hot button. Because if I if I go down more than five, I've wasted their time, wasted my time. But if I said, "What's your tenth priority?" Yeah, throw it away. The first five are the most important, but the first two or three are really the most important. Does anyone remember when we talked about the 80-10-10 rule on houses? What is it? I really like that too. You said 80% they really like, 10% they were going to change anyway, and 10% they can just live with? Yeah, it's, it's Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, we're not looking for the perfect house. I don't want I don't want to sell you the perfect house anyways. I want you to buy another house in a few years. That's the mindset. No. <laughs> Say that. Say that. Say that. <laughs> Well, what we're looking for is perfect doesn't exist. Good enough is not good enough. But what I'm looking for is a house for you that's 80% of exactly what you're looking for. Location, style, size, price, 80% of what you're looking for. 10% of the things that you can live with. Maybe it's got a different color bathroom or granite or tile or something like that. And then 10% of the things that you were going to change anyways. So I want you to think through those lines. I want you to think through that logic. Is this house 80% of what I'm looking for? Am I going to change the things I don't like anyways? You know, and that will peel you back that perfection. Oh, I got to find the perfect home. No, you don't. You need you to know, chill. Dan, Dan, you raised a point that I think I just hit my, hit my, hit my brain, whatever was left of it. Uh, we often hear realtors say, what's the most important part of looking for a home? Location, location, location. Well, that's BS. Location itself may be one of them, but to tell somebody's location, 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 there are a couple other factors that are really important to your clients. And when's the last time a realtor bought a house for their client? Very seldom. I, I, I can't, I, I, I would never do it. The client has to pay their own money through a mortgage company to get the house they want, they desire, and they need. Location may be one of the areas, but how you ask the questions to get their hot button, what they're looking for. And it's not what you and I or anyone else here on, on the uh, KW Squares is looking for, you know, or believe in. It's what they want. And if you can position yourself to really create that relationship, it's relationship sales then they're going to trust you. They're going to want with you. And not only after you make the sale for them, but they're going to send you the referrals. Easy for you to say, Dan. You couldn't be more right. It's relational. Going we are in a relationship business. I want you to realize realtor, is a weird spelling for relationship. I don't know how it works, but it does. Just follow me along with this one. You've heard that we are in a contact sport, real estate, real estate's contact sport. We need to make contacts. We need to make good contacts with people to create good engagement, to have good relationships so that we become the economist of choice. When they think real estate, they think what? Me. You. Right. And when they think you, they think? Real estate. Real estate. That's what it's all about. Creating that mind share, creating that engagement. It's only going to help build you a much larger, much more profitable, higher referral based business. My realtor really cares for me, cares about me, cares about my family. They understand me. So guys, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. It is 831. You're one minute into the rest of your life. What are you going to do with it? We're going to, uh, we're going to watch it. Hour. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to spend a great hour and a half with Mr. Chater here at 11 o'clock. I'm excited for that. If you guys aren't going to join that class, I hope you rechange your mind. Steve Chater, 11 o'clock. The link is in one kwsa.com. He is going to be go, going over how to create investors out of your clients. If you can turn one person's home purchase into 10, is that worth your time? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, you spend all that time cultivating one lead. If that one lead buys 10 homes the next five years, is it worth your time? Yes. So 
Invest in yourselves. It's only going to pay out in dividends in the long run. I've got another meeting right now. I got to jump off it and jump onto it. I will see you guys soon. If you need me this weekend, give me a call, give me a text. I'm here for you. Thanks, Thanks man. Man.